Alright, so this is a review of the Retron 3 by Hyperkin. Um, I know there are a lot of reviews out there uh, for the Hyperkin 3, but um, mine's going to be a little bit different. Mine is going to be done with smooth jazz. This next test is very dangerous. To help you remain tranquil in the face of almost certain death, smooth jazz will be deployed in 3, 2, Alright, so now that we got the jazz going, let's talk about um, what you get in the package. So essentially you get two wireless controllers. Um, they look similar to the Sega Genesis controllers with the six buttons um, instead of the three, which is what I have. I don't actually have a six button Genesis controller. Um, they are infrared, um, so they're not too uh, responsive, but um, right now this is the only thing I have for Super NES until my Super NES controllers come in, and um, they'll work fine for that. The only, the big issue is this right here. Uh, as you can see, this is the button mapping, and um, A is B and B is A, and I mean, so it, it gets kind of confusing, but for the NES it's a little bit easier to deal with but I mean Genesis and uh, SNES it gets kind of confusing because I think X and Y is switched around the only thing that's the same for the Genesis is Z and C so I mean that that has to be frustrating I've never played it with those two systems the, the NES and the Genesis because I have those controllers so I don't have to use these um, they do take two AAA batteries so, I mean, it, it's kind of worth it. They're kind of neat to have, but you don't have to use them. All right, so now let's focus on um, the console itself. Um, as you can see, it has three uh, spots here. The SNES, the Genesis, and the NES. Um, and then you, to change them, you have three lights here so you know what's on, but you have the styler, so you turn it to NES if you want to play this and then Genesis and then SNES. Now, on the earlier models, there was a fourth click, but on this newer model that I just got, um, it does not have that fourth click over, so they did fix that. Um, the power button is really smooth and the reset button has a nice click to it as well. Um, as you can see on the front here, you have the receiver for the, um, hold on, there we go. We have the receiver for the wireless controllers along with the SNES slots as well. On this side, we have the NES controllers. Um, I will tell you it's a tight fit, um, so that's nice. It won't be falling out, but with the Sega Genesis controllers, it's kind of loose. You don't know that um, they're, if they're in tight or not or in at all, but they are so it's really not that big of a deal as long as they work and they do um, now with the games you can um, play games uh, like this like Sonic and Knuckles All right. it's kind of for the for the Genesis part and the NES part the games are just really really hard to get in and out, um, they won't be flopping around or anything, so I mean that's nice, but um, you're going to hear like a little crunching sound, which is just the sensors, the connectors picking it up, um, so I guess that's how you know it's in, but that, that kind of does bother me because I feel like it's going to scratch the brass that's on the inside of the games. but. Um, I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. Um, so like with Sonic and Knuckles, it has this piece right here at the top so you can play Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Um, that attachment does work. Um, I tested it out, it has no problem reading it. Um, so if you have games like this, don't worry. Um, it'll work fine. Also if you have games like um, Duck Hunt, the 
gun does work for that, so you won't have to worry about that um, either. Um, so let's look at the back here of the console. Um, pretty basic. Um, the one big thing that separates it from others, along with allowing you to use the original controllers, um, most other clone consoles don't allow you to do that, is the S video um, along with the composite. Um, the S video though is only for Sega Genesis and SNES. Um, NES does not pick up on that. Also, uh, you can see the switch right here. I don't know if the camera will focus. Um, you can kind of see a O and a J. This is for the different types of games. So you can play Japanese games on uh, this console as well, which is another great feature. Um, um, a lot of people complain about different sounds and, and the color being a little bit off. Um, the only issue that I had so far is with um, Altered Beast. There was this blue line like right here the whole time I was playing the game. And I think it, it's probably the game because it it had it's kind of a little broken. It rattles and makes noise, um, and it's not the best. It, it's not in the best condition either. Um, so I, I think it was the game's fault because I did play, like I said, um, this game, and that issue didn't come up. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, now I'm going to show you how to um, properly maintain your games. Um, I've done a lot of research on this because I, I had an original NES and I kept on thinking it, it can't be the console. I mean the console's in good shape but um, I did clean the games and you know it, it really didn't help and it did end up being the console that's why I got this but still even with this when I first put them in the um, it didn't want to read the NES games um, that well uh, as well so um, I've done a lot of research on this I looked up how to do it and um, I'm I would have to say the Brasso technique um, either opening it and uh, if you can open your game because some games um, have a they don't have regular flathead screws in the back they have um, a different type of style and um, you, you would have to spend money on a kit to even get the part I mean it's a pain in the butt so you can just take a q-tip and put a little bit of Brasso on it and um, clean it that way and I will tell you after I did that um, my uh, rad racer that I got just didn't play at all I mean it it just wouldn't it wouldn't play the sound if it showed the video I mean it just wouldn't do anything so uh, after I cleaned it uh, with the Brasso though, first time in worked like a charm. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that and um, hopefully you can use it on your games and um, it'll turn out real well. Now um, there's another technique that I, uh, that I read about that a lot of people are against but um, I mean you, you can't fight the results on that. And if you use Scotch Bright Pad, um, not the heavy duty ones, get the you know the lightest you can get, um, and just a little bit of water. Um, you can you rub it on the brass, and that gunk comes right off. Now, the reason that it works is because you're not going to be doing it more than once, because you're not going to have to, because um, it does it can eventually take off the brass, but. Um, if you only do it one time, you won't have to do it for the rest of your lifetime because it just it just won't happen and it, it, again if, as long as you keep your games in the right type of environment. Um, but I'm going to say go with the Brasso. Um, it's cheaper and it's safe because it is designed to clean brass. So now I'm going to switch over to a different um, style camera so we can better see this and um, I'll teach you how to clean your NES games, SNES games as well are good for it and um, but I'm not sure if the Genesis games 
are, but I will look that up and when I do the cleaning thing, I may even clean a Sega Genesis game because I have one that doesn't want to work. So, all right. All right, so I did a little research and I found that you can use the same technique that I use for the NES for the uh, Sega Genesis game. So this game, uh, Quackshot, has been giving me a lot of problems. It'll play, but then eventually it'll just be like, meh, and then not work. And now, um, I looked inside here, and um, you probably can't see it, so I'm not going to show you. There is quite a bit of dirt in there, because it was a game that was used um, at a video rental store. So, what you're going to need um, is some Brasso. You can buy it at any hardware store. Uh, I think they sell it at Kmart as well, Walmart, more than likely, and Target. Um, but if you, for some reason, can't find it, um, that's okay. You can use uh, rubbing alcohol as well. I wouldn't go anything past 70%, um, just for precautionary reasons. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take Q-tips, since you can't open the Sega Genesis games that easily because of these little bolts right here. Um, you're just going to use a Q-tip. Um, with the NES games, um, some of them you can open, and I would recommend that you do. That way you can get everything and see it real well, and um, it'll be easier to clean. So what you do is you just open up the Brasso, um, kind of squeeze it so it's coming out of the top. Just kind of roll the Q-tip like that. You don't need too much, but if you get too much, that's fine. And then you're just going to take it like this, you just kind of rub it like this, kind of roll it. And what this Brasso does is it's just going to get the little grime off. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of hard for me to do this. Um, it's all black and gunky. I'm going to do this on both sides this and just keep on going um, normally what I do is after it starts to get too bad so I'll turn it over and I'll still do that same side because you never know um, what you might have missed um, and like I said you can't have too much and you can rub this thing all day and it'll still produce um, black or green gunk um, but that's fine. Um, you just need to get it sort of good. Now, um, if you have a game though that um, after you clean it still doesn't work, um, try to get a light in there and see because there may just be like one or two contacts that are a little bit worse than the other ones were and that's what's causing the problem. Um, I know with uh, Super Mario 2, uh, that's the problem that I had, and um, I found like one or two uh, contacts that were a little bit worse than the other. Put a little bit of Brasso on, not too much like I said, just for that one contact, and um, just focused in on it. Um, it's a little bit easier to do on those, but um, you can kind of do it on these Sega Genesis games as well. Um, it's not too hard. Um, to do and it's not going to damage it. Um, like I said, you can rub it all day and you're still going to get nasty stuff like this. Um, mine were probably worse than what they should be because they were kept in a basement and didn't have cases. But surprisingly, this one did have a case and um, it's still pretty bad. Um, probably from its days as a video rental game. So. I can do a lot of damage to these games. Um, they get played more than usual. Um, so after you do that, and you do it with a Brasso, just take a plain one and just rub it over it again because you are gonna have excess Brasso sitting on top and you don't want that um, getting in your console um, too much because well, it's not brass. It's a 
so and it can it does dry up and get get all nasty and it can cause problems if it does that so you just swipe it until it's uh, all gone if you see it on the edges there just you know get it out and clean it you want to do this until it um, you don't see any green coming off or there's not too much so that's good enough um, I recommend that you let this sit for a little bit um, if you don't um, it could damage your system um, so just let it sit for a little bit not too long because I mean you did wipe it if you did wipe it down and you didn't let it sit um, it, sh <laughs> it should be okay um, but um, it should work like I said I cleaned um, NES games that just didn't work at all and one cleaning and it <coughs> sorry the brasso smells is bothering me um, and it worked just fine first time in I mean NES games never work the first time you put them into the console I mean that's just a fact um, so um, the technique that I just showed you, you can do the same thing with rubbing alcohol, but um, it doesn't work as well. It, it will get uh, the top layer of gunk off, and that does help. Um, so, I mean, that's that's a start, but the Brasso isn't, isn't that much. It's about three bucks, um, and you can get a lot of use out of it. Just like this, this is like two bucks and you can get a lot of use out of this as well if you only use it for cleaning your games. Um, I wouldn't... Okay, well, my camera ran out of memory, so that's how that happens. But, um, yeah, basically that's it. Um, the console, the Retron 3, I recommend it. Highly recommend it. It's great. Um, there are a few games that do not work. Um, but those are few and far between. Um, I know that uh, Virtua Racer for the Sega Genesis does not work. Um, I want to say Street Fighter 2 Alpha doesn't work. I don't know. Um, that, Like I said, uh, they have updated the console just a little bit. So I don't know if they fixed those issues on these newer models. Um, so if you're worried about a game... Um, look on uh, forums and whatnot and see what games work and do not work but the majority of the games do work pretty much every game it's just like 10 at most for each console um, but all the popular games work so I wouldn't worry too much about it if you're on the fence get it um, because it's not that big of an issue because you are gonna be able to play it uh, most of the time um, but the good thing about it is is that it does have the original controllers that you can use um, so that capability just blows everything else out of the water because there's nothing like using the original controllers and accessories with the games um, most things like the FC twin you have to use their controller and it's a little bit awkward sometimes and it doesn't respond very well and um, you can't use accessories but with the Retron 3 you can so um, it's a buy um, definitely use this technique uh, with the Brasso to clean your games um, got to take care of them because um, they don't last forever but anything you can do to extend the life of these games is important um, because these are the foundations um, for um, the games we have today and um, we really need to keep a hold of these. Um, these are special. Um, not this game. I don't care about this game. But I'm saying, you know, like the main titles are really important to keep an eye on and uh, keep in good condition. Um, except for E.T. Everybody knows that. E.T. can... And, um... Fester's Quest. That one, too. I'm sure there's a couple other ones that I can think of, but, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, I'm Simon for World of Simon Craft. 
Um, and this is a review of Thretron 3, which is the beginning of this video, and then how to properly clean your old uh, video game consoles. Um, also, side note, last thing, you can use uh, both the rubbing alcohol and the Brasso to clean the contacts on um, the NES, the original NES. Um, you take um, the alcohol and you scrub it on the 17-pin um, connector, both sides with a toothbrush, and then the part that the one side slides into the chip, you use the Brasso, and apparently that works really well. It didn't work for mine because there was other issues with it, uh, not just um, that the 17 pin connector was actually in really great shape. I'm pretty sure it was a replacement, um, but yeah, that technique does work um, sometimes with um, connectors that aren't that bad of shape, but um, still need a little bit of help. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, look forward to our review of uh, Skyward Sword. Um, it should be uh, coming out whenever I have time and my friend Cody has time to do it. It's just really busy right now, but we may be able to get something out during the holiday season. And um, look forward to more reviews like this and also um, now, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> old video game reviews as well. I'm sure we'll do Quackshot. Um, I got Toy Story, I got a whole bunch of good games and I'll be buying more in the future. So um, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, and um, we do have a Facebook page, a Google Plus, and a Twitter, so please do all of those, and the, this video will be posted on that along with our other videos, and the more times you get people to watch, the more and better our videos can become. So thank you, and um, see you next time.
with it. Yes, get over it! Get over it!